You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This is episode 123 of the Wisdom by Wessa show on the Horse Radio Network. This is Mike Donnell. I'm Casey Wilbanks Coletti. And this is Sofia Yagela. Welcome to Wisdom by Wessa on the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. This podcast is brought to you by the Western and English Sales Association, WESA, which provides the world's largest trade events for retailers, manufacturers, and sales representatives of the equestrian industry. In this podcast, we feature exclusive interviews with noteworthy Western and English personalities, retailers, and exhibitors who you've always wanted to talk to. Don't miss out on all the news for manufacturers and retailers in the equine industry. Sophia, this is our last episode prior to the January WESA trade show. What are some last minute tips you can give buyers before attending? Yes, so buyers were able to pre-register before the WESA trade show, but if you miss the deadline, don't worry, you can still register on site, even if you have never attended a WESA trade show before, but you can still be prepared and fill out the paperwork ahead of time. You can either download it on wesatradeshow.com slash attend, or you can also just find them on the tables at the registration area on site. So some people have called us before being kind of panicked about thinking or wondering if they can still get in. But again, don't worry if you have a retail license and purchase in quantities for resale, then we'll still get you batched even on site. What else can you share with buyers so they can be prepared? My number one tip is to download the Westside Trade Show app. You can find it in your app store and download it even now to be prepared ahead of time. Not only can you browse through the product lines and brands that will be there, but you can also see a list of all the events and food outlets. And something that's really great is that you can zoom in on the floor plans. So that's helpful to kind of pinpoint where you want to go and who you want to meet. But just in general, there are so many things to make use um, for at the Wessa Trade Show. There's going to be free hotel shuttles, giveaways, picture opportunities, meeting influencers, and so much more. Great. And if any buyer needs help on site, I'm sure they can find the Wessa staff easily to ask for help. Finally, what are the dates of the Wessa Trade Show? Just to remind everybody. Yes, that will be January 17th through the 20th, every day starting at 6.30 a.m. and ending at 6 p.m. Again, we're so excited to see everyone again this January and welcome some new exhibitors and buyers as well. And I will say if anybody's on the fence about, you know, wrapping up the holidays and not really sure if they're going to go, definitely go. The DMC is a wonderful and beautiful facility. It's, I feel, even though it's so big, it's so easy to navigate. And I definitely think um, it's it's a must go. And I think January is going to be a great show. Oh, thank you so much for saying that. Yes, we do try to make everything easy. And yes, we're going to be there on site to help if you need anything else. A decade or so ago, someone gifted Wendy Osborne a pendant. But she didn't see a pendant. She saw the makings of a very unique belt buckle. She made a couple of prototypes, but they weren't perfect belt buckles. This creative venture was then interrupted when she decided to join the U.S. Air Force. It wasn't until she left the military that she decided to focus her creative talents on perfecting and marketing that early stage buckle design and founded Blue Ribbon Buckle. As one testament to her creative achievement, she received Wes's Most Innovative Product Award. Let's let Wendy tell her own story. Wendy Osborne, hey, thanks a lot for taking the time out of your busy day to joining us on the Wisdom by Wessa podcast. Hi, Mike. Thanks for having me. You've got a great story. I think everybody would be interested in it. I was fascinated when I chatted with you, got the idea from for your your buckles from, I guess, a pendant someone gave you. You tried a couple of times, and then you pivoted and you joined the Air Force. And by the way, uh, from WESA, thank you for your service. You spent, what, I believe eight years, came back, and lo and behold, you started making buckles, you went to WESA, and you got the Most Innovative Product Award. Now, that's quite a lot to do. Congratulations to you. 
Oh, thank you, Mike. And thank you for supporting us. Let's go back to that first pendant. And I know creativity is your thing, but let's go back to that first pendant and what struck you as terms of this maybe is not a pendant. It really could be a buckle, a, a brief summary of the military service, and then roll into how a blue ribbon buckle came to be. I was going through an arduous time and um, I received a lovely gift from a friend and I've been, I've done so much when it comes to art mediums, clay, stained glass, charcoals, acrylics, you name it. I've done it all. And when she gave me this gift, it was with a stained glass type of application. It was a pendant. I dropped it down to my waist and she looked at that and she said, I would totally rock that. Meaning, can it be a belt buckle? This little pendant? because I really didn't know what I was doing. I did some sketches. I took my idea down to a foundry in Los Angeles. They said it was, quote unquote, impossible to make a three-piece belt buckle. And I just said, can you just work with me? And I really didn't know what I was doing. I had no mentorship, no formal education when it comes to product development. I took this first initial prototype I took it to sale. It was an event to raise money for children and I sold eight, but I made $500. So that told me like, Hey, you're onto something, something good. So let's making it better. Um, I was losing my, my savings, yada, yada, yada for research and development. And that took me to here I am at almost 40 years old. And I'm like, well, if I go into the metallurgy part, department with the Air Force, I know that Uncle Sam will pave the way, teach me everything I need to know. And when I get out, I could work with a product developer. So when I got out after being gone for my initial eight months, got out, met with a product engineer, we designed something totally aside from something that's primitive. Now it's Air Force standard, like to the T. (laughs) And that's what's out in commerce today. By Air Force standard, uh, explain what that is to people who are listening to the show. Air Force standard, it has to be perfect. So it's for me going through the metal department, if you're creating a bolt or a nut and it goes on an engine, that the tolerance for a bolt and a nut, it can't be like plus or minus 500 thousandths or the bolt will fall out based on turbulence and the engine will fall out. So everything has to be perfect. That's Air Force standards. And so while you were in the military, you were making parts for aircraft? Yes. So then you transferred that meticulous approach to making belkles. Yes, sir. Hey, that's pretty that's pretty neat. But now <laughs> you've got the idea, you've got the experience. You know how to make things to an exact tolerance, but you still need to get a business going. Talk to us about the business. Talk to us about what Blue Ribbon Buckle really is, how you go about doing it, and we'll get into that part of it. Okay. First and foremost, nobody knows who I am. I need marketing like a farmer needs the rain, okay? (laughs) Um, I've been doing this for a long time. I want to grow organically. So with that being said, I, I... my first obligation was to our country. So I've been out for, for over two and a half years, but in within the two and a half years, now I have the time and attention to give my baby blue, to give my business my full undivided attention. And so I've created my website. I've scaled. I've actually have um, a new accessory called the Hem Huggers. Um, and that's actually what I got my blue ribbon award from, from WESA was for the hem huggers and it oh, was for the hem huggers. Oh, cool. Yes. Yes. Cool. So now, like, oh, okay. <laughs> and, and again, for those listening, what's the hem huggers? Cause I had to ask. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad you asked. A hem hugger is, it's a, it's a one piece device that clips on or snugs onto the heel of your boot and it holds your hem of your pant leg up from touching the ground so it doesn't fray. So it keeps frays at bay 
So you are now a two product company. You're a belt buckle company and the hem hugger. Are you selling <laughs> only online or are you selling through retailers as well? Uh, I'm selling online uh, as far as like my own pricing, selling online website and social selling. So Facebook, TikTok, um, Instagram, um, I do that. But I just started wholesaling at WESA. That has been my first wholesale window. So you are looking to pair up with retailers to market the product border to border and coast to coast. Oh, hands down. Yes, All sir. Right. <laughs> Casey, jump in here. Well, let's talk about the product that won the award a little more in depth. Um, how does it how does it hook on to your your shoe or your boot? Um, it actually it, it has a little bit of give. Um, okay. It just so it can't go like if you have a really narrow foot, like a child, it's not going to fit with four child. It's, it's a standard size. Okay. Um, but a, a more a, it's a cow, usually for a cowboy boot. Um, so there's okay. like a little space between like the actual heel and then the main part of the boot uh-huh. where you yeah. heel. So it goes right in that little tiny slot. Um, okay. But there is some give, you know, inner and outer give. So it fits okay. pretty, pretty sec- securely, but it does hold up your hem. And the beauty of this is there's a place where you could put interchangeable conchos. So a lot of things, a lot of people like to keep things personalized. Mm-hmm. My, my interchangeable concho on my hem hugger is the United States Air Force symbol because that's a rep- representation of me. And sure. I, I like personal, personalized items because, you know, it just makes them yours and it's a, it's a part of who you are. Well, it, it makes Sorry. it a fashion piece, right? To go with your different outfits. Um, so just for the people listening that, you know, have not heard of this, it's a new product, obviously. Um, what are some of those interchangeable conchos? What, what is, what do they look like? What are some of the options? You, it, it's anywhere from roses. I do, um, oh. I do patina those, or I do put paint, like, you know, like red roses, yellow okay. roses. Um, sure. There could there could be Thunderbirds or pretty much anything turquoise, pretty much anything that you could think that is a single post right. Chicago screw concho. At Montana Silversmiths, we love to help people celebrate what matters: Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day. Find gifts for everyone at Montana Silversmiths Showroom fourteen two one six. Here you will also find the twenty twenty four West Trust. Freedom Isn't Free Raffle Spurs. These are custom-made spurs by Montana Silversmiths. Since 2001, we have raised, with your help, over $25,000. Help us spur each other on and celebrate what matters. So the first Mm -hmm. time at a WESA show and you won this award your first time, that's pretty exciting. Yes, ma'am. So when they came around and they were bringing me this big old blue ribbon, I was like, oh, because I was caught off guard. Yes. (laughs) Oh my and goodness. My company, and my company's Blue Ribbon Buckle Co. And Oh my goodness, yes. And when I got the Blue Ribbon, I go, oh, you just made me officially a Blue Ribbon company. <laughs> yeah, it's like you you manifested it, right? And you didn't even yes. know it. We talk to people that are like, they, they've went to West of Shows for years, right? And they, they're always striving to win an award. So first time is a pretty big deal. Oh, thank you. And the fact and the fact that I had my grandmother's old Bible there and it was the blue ribbon Bible. It, it's stamped Are you in serious? gold. Mm-hmm. Well that's, that's cool. Very, yeah. Yes, yeah. that's I believe in all of those the the vibe, right? Vibing. Yes, <laughs> you had all the, the vibes omen. going. <laughs> Good for you. Well, it's great thank to have you. you a part of Wessa and I think one of the coolest things about talking to people that have created their own products or their own brand, the personality behind it, it's obvious you're very passionate about your company and your products. And I think that's a huge selling point to retailers looking to carry products because I think that will carry through, right? If a retailer is going to carry your product, you're going to be there behind them to help them market that product, sell that product, pick the right things to put in their store. 
Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, this is my baby. Like I birthed this from from nothing. Um, everybody said I was crazy when I was <laughs> coming up with this this idea to make a three piece belt buckle. And but the thing is, when the vision is given to you, it's personal. It's that's your vision. It's not for anybody to understand. That's your vision. So it's only crazy. It. It's only crazy until someone makes it happen, right? <laughs> yeah, and it's like that's, hey, how, that's a good idea. <laughs> It's how it always goes. You know, it seems so unattainable, but there's always somebody that's willing to make it happen. So um, back to your buckles. I guess you, nobody's going to know your product like you do, but for any retailers that are listening, who's the target market for these buckles? And and besides the obvious, what makes them so unique? What's going to make those customers walking in the door want to buy your buckle? Well, it's the first belt buckle ever that you could put vulnerable textile inside your belt buckle. So gone are the days stamped out cookie cutter belt buckles that you can't interchange. It's like you're basically, your wardrobe is being based around a around the belt buckle instead of the opposite. Your belt buckle should be based on your wardrobe. You know, so now you could interchange it. So basically like the inside, it's, I call it for short, AKA a pie pan, but as the inventor, I named it the holster. Now, mind you, it doesn't hold a gun, but it does hold vulnerable textile up to 300, sure. uh, three sixteenths of vulnerable textile. So feathers, suede, embroidery work, beading, uh-huh. um, anything that you would want to protect, even a picture, because it really doesn't have to be, um, it could be something like personal, like, like that. Uh, it's just, it's super fun. You could interchange them. Everything's magnetic. The, the frames, I have three different frame styles. So there's the standard, which has no bling bling, no sparkles, no um, Austrian crystals, nothing like that. And then there's Orion's belt. It has eight um, Austrian crystals, like within the frame, just enough, just a little sparkle. And then I have the granddaddy of them all, which is on the rocks. And I work side by side with my Austrian crystal company. I can't say their name because I'm under contract, Um, but they make me custom multifaceted rolled crystal bands, different colors that go inside um, this particular frame. So you buy the holster of your choice or or more than one, and then that's interchangeable. And so really you're getting more bang for your buck that way. And as you mentioned, it will complement your outfits as opposed to the other way around. Um, Talk about some of the designs that the different designs that can be purchased to go in the holsters. Oh Oh my gosh. This is the fun part. I love being at my bench. This is how, this is how I do things. So I don't like to use paper. I mean, you could use paper as something that goes inside your, your holster, but I like to use printed canvas So I work with um, another creative talent. He's in Oregon. He's like my main dude. (laughs) And he gets my crazy brains. I do the sketches. He comes (laughs) up with these beautiful designs. So I like to work with printed canvas. Now with printed canvas, I could either deck it out with either American glitter or German glitter, um, German being glass, as opposed to American glitter being made of tin, colored tin. Instead of like, decking out the the canvas, I could send it to my embroiderer and my embroiderer will know based on whatever design I want to do, centering the design, the embroidery work with the printed canvas, or I could just do embroidery work on suede or leather. We've done embroidery work and there's so many, so many multifaceted ways to do embroidery work. It's double chain stitch, um, single chain stitch, puff, flat. I mean, there's so many different ways to even do embroidery work. It's just beautiful. And you could do that on hair on hide. I mean, it's pretty much endless. You could do different special motifs in there to complement with the background. I've done a lot of custom work, uh, one for the sister of the Buffalo Bills quarterback. Yeah. Just anything's possible, really. Sure. There's something for everybody is what you're saying. You, you, you've you hit a lot of niches. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yes. Well, and maybe how about something for Mike? Every time we do a show, he'll say, I think this is more in your wheelhouse than mine. I don't really wear jewelry or ride yeah. stones. <laughs> okay, Mike, listen, Mike, yeah. you'd, be, you'd be amazed. Most of my clients are men. <laughs> really? So, yeah. no. Yes. Yes. Believe it or not, I did not. Are they buying them talking. for someone yes. else or for themselves? For themselves. Really? Yes. And I'm just like, okay, because a, tra- uh, a belt buckle traditionally is not round, okay? It's it's either oval or square, as far as a man, okay? Um, I'm, they know what they're getting themselves into, uh, you know? Like they, <laughs> I'm not going to steer them, you know, different and different, you know, differently. So, you want one of my belt buckles? I'm 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 game. <laughs> so I've got a question. Then I want to. I'm 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 going back to the logistics on this a little bit. <clears throat> so I'm a yeah. retailer. I'm in South Dakota, and I met you at Wessa, or I didn't, but I listened to this show, and I want to carry the line. So you are going to <clears throat> provide me with a selection of holsters and separately a selection of the the. You call them the pie pans, the inserts, or how does that how does that work for a retailer? Yes. Um, so the belt buckle that's that's a separate item, the the buckle locket, and then you could purchase whatever designs you choose to carry in your establishment, because every establishment is you know because I have some off wall designs like it's it's whatever fits your home, whatever fits your your company. Well, so, but yeah, let's they're, say, they're, the, you know, we got a Western store in South Dakota and are, are you going to then, and, and he sells to, or she sells to a lot of ranchers, farmers, people in that area, but they like the concept. Then is he going to have a display of 20 inserts and they, they can buy those separately or yeah. how is that? Yes. And, and how do you and the retailer decide what do the design of the inserts are? Do you have a stock catalog of inserts, I guess, is where we're going to start? Yes, I have um, my line sheets, and they could pick and pull what what they have, but I'm also open to doing whatever is more custom to their liking. So I, if they want maybe their brand, you know, a lot of people are loyal to a certain company, a certain brand. Um, we could talk about, licensing we could talk about things of that nature we could drop some contracts um i'm actually i can't say what i'm in the middle of but it's through paramount pictures um i did 17 designs for a well-known television series i can't say the name and they picked 13 designs out of the 17 and i'm just on standby so i don't know when that's going to roll out but just to say that it's it's endless like i'm i like is more personal, the better for me, because I want to make my client happy. <laughs> and in the end game, I want to make my customer, their cu- your customer happy. How long does it take you to create and produce and ship a custom set of designs? Two to three weeks. Okay. All right. That's what I was thinking. It must be something about like that. So yeah. and you could do these for events. Uh, you know, if a state fair uh, or a big rodeo or a trade, a, a Western association wanted to have inserts with their logo, you could produce those as well. What do you need from them? Do you need something to start with or do you create uh, an idea out of your head or how does that work? If they want to love their, their brand, their logo, whatever, they ship it to you and say, I want 50 inserts with my brand or my rodeos logo or whatever. How would that work? The artwork would have to be specific because I can't work with PDFs or JPEGs or anything like that. I would need their Pantone colors, you know, to keep things consistent to their brand sizing it's just and of course licensing right i would sign the contract so i have permission to use their brand Mm -hmm. and of course non-disclosure agreements because i'm not going to be disclosing what's theirs because it's their property there's not a lot of products out there i mean you can put a patch on your shirt that you are on Uh the xyz rodeo committee but this is something brand new and something interesting that events and associations if i was a retailer i'd be looking at events and associations and go to them and say look i can provide you with this set of buckles 
with your own imprinted logo on it. Now, I know they're going to sell them on onesies and twosies and whatever all year long, and they're going to want to do that, but it seems to me that that's two different markets that you can tap, and I applaud you for coming up with that kind of a flexible product. Oh, thank you. Also, Mike, not only are the, is the inside customizable, the outside. So the glass, ah. that, yes, the glass that protects your, not only you, because it's Gorilla Glass, it's not just, it's Corning's Gorilla Glass. We're under contract as well. I don't use just regular scrap glass, picture frame glass. It's there's There's a level of protection there. So you could, before it goes through the ionic strengthening phase for the glass, you could have it customized and etched with your brand, company brand, or like McDonald's has the golden arches and it's a certain yellow. You can have Pantone color with your whatever design on the glass, infused on the glass. Man, that's an, uh, those, that's amazing. Hey, listen, you know, we could talk about this all day. I mean, I'm intrigued with the product. I'm intrigued with the flexibility. Uh, I'm obviously intrigued with your enthusiasm. Uh, you know, congratulations again for your award. Again, thank you for the service. Um, what I really like about this is your approach in terms of precision, which came from being in the military, but it would appear to me that you apply that precision discipline to every aspect of your business. And that's the kind of company that other people want to do business with. Mm. Yeah, I I don't cut corners. I'm a perfectionist. And my whole life, people are saying, oh, it doesn't have to be perfect, Wendy. Just throw it together. It doesn't have to be perfect. But you know what? In certain arenas, yes. It does have to be perfect. And the bottom line is my customers are happy that I'm a perfectionist. Please make it perfect because that's what they're paying for, you know? <laughs> so I, I understand perfectly and I applaud you uh, for that attitude. I want to thank you for spending time to be with us on the podcast. It's been a great fun to chat with you and you're so enthusiastic uh, about what you're doing and it, it shows through. I think anybody listening to the show would say, boy, that's the kind of personality that I want to do business with because A, they'd be fun to work with and B, I got confidence that they'll uh, deliver what they say they will. And of course, you know, we're glad that you came to WISA. We are pleased that you won the award and we hope that that relationship with WESA continues for a long, long time. Yes, sir. I'm going to be there again in January. So Okay. If you're around, stop, stop by. <laughs> if we were there, we would be there. I guarantee you. Okay. Wendy, thanks a lot. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you. The show notes and links from today's show can be found at wisdombywessa.com. And if you have feedback, we'd love to hear it. There's a contact link on that site. The Wisdom by Wessa show will be published on the 15th and 30th of every month. You can listen on most of your favorite podcast players, and you can also listen on wisdombywessa.com. Be sure to visit all the great shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Wessa, where the industry meets.